Antonio Brown's behavior with the Oakland Raiders this past summer has been one of the top stories in the NFL this year and has ultimately culminated with his official release from the Raiders as of this morning. From the cryotherapy incident, the helmet controversy, all of his back and forth with the Raiders and his social media posts, there's been a lot of questions and concerns regarding Antonio Brown's mental health going into the upcoming season. Welcome back everybody, my name is Brian and this is your number one stop for everything sports medicine and sports injury related. Today we're gonna be talking about Antonio Brown in the recent light of all this controversy surrounding his behavior and actions this past summer. In particular, I want to address the speculation that these recent behaviors suggest that Brown is suffering from CTE. Make sure you guys go subscribe if you like this type of content and want to stay up to date with future videos with the upcoming NFL season and the NBA season right around the corner. And let's get started. CTE is one of the hottest topics in the NFL and even in the sports medicine community as we try to get a better understanding about this disease, what causes it, how we can prevent it, and how we should be managing it. It's really easy for the media to jump all over anytime a player is exhibiting any possible erratic behavior or anything that could be suggestive of possible underlying CTE. But I wanted to in part make this video because I think we need to be really careful about throwing around the diagnosis of CTE, especially in a situation like this. The three points I wanna get across in this video are number one, if this does in fact represent manifestation of CTE, it would A, be extremely rare and a really odd presentation given his age and history, and B, would be impossible to actually prove and diagnose. The second is that because CTE is considered by many to be a progressive neurodegenerative condition, we should be extremely careful about suggesting that a current player has any sort of progressive disease that there's currently no treatment for. The third thing is whether or not this is CTE, which again, we have no way of diagnosing this in someone who's alive. Does it actually matter when it comes to trying to help someone displaying these types of symptoms? A very brief primer on what exactly CTE is. It stands for chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Chronic meaning it builds up over a long period of time. Traumatic because research has shown us there's a pretty good connection between repetitive brain trauma and developing these findings. And encephalopathy because of the general disturbance in the function of the brain that it can cause. The biggest thing to understand right away is that there is no way of diagnosing CTE in a living person. We don't have a blood test, we don't have an MRI or a scan that we can perform on someone. The diagnosis can only be made on autopsy after someone has passed away. We can certainly look at symptoms that people are displaying and look at their history and try to make some connections, but these symptoms also overlap with a lot of other neurologic conditions and so we can't even clinically say yet that someone meets criteria. The mechanism behind how CTE develops in the brain is centered around something called tau protein. This is a structural protein present in brain tissue that can accumulate in abnormal ways ultimately resulting in these things we call neurofibrillary tangles and can ultimately lead to degeneration and damage to the function of the brain neurons in the brain tissue. It's the same protein that's implicated with Alzheimer's disease, even though it presents in a different way and in different areas of the brain. There's belief that the repetitive trauma to the brain with repeat concussions and head injuries leads to this abnormal accumulation of this protein that then ends up causing the manifestations of symptoms that we see with CTE. Now I understand why people are making this connection between Brown's behavior and questioning a diagnosis of CTE. Along with the cognitive and behavioral impairments we can see with CTE, people can also exhibit erratic behavior, impulse control problems, and just general behavior control problems. So when we see the stuff that Brown has been doing in recent days, I can understand why people would make this judgment, especially because he's a football player and has suffered a lot of head injuries. A lot of people go back to a hit he sustained from Vontez Perfect as kind of being the initial trigger point for when his behavioral pattern started to change. Connecting this back to CTE, researchers really don't know yet the exact threshold for the number of head injuries or how severe the head injuries need to be in order to lead to CTE. So we really don't have any research backing up the claim that this hit from Perfect was what could have triggered or started these behavioral changes with CTE. I mentioned in the beginning how this would be really atypical as a presentation for CTE. The research that does exist is pretty biased because a lot of the brains that have been donated are donated from individuals who specifically were exposed to repetitive brain trauma and exhibited some sort of behavioral or cognitive concerns before their death. This results in a lot of bias introduced in these studies where the population of brains you're sampling and the players' lives you're looking at 
are already selected down for the ones who exhibited symptoms. In general though, these research studies have shown that when players start to exhibit these symptoms, it's typically delayed from after they completed playing football and happens a little bit later on in life than where Brown is at right now. When we look back, we see these symptoms typically manifested in players after they retired and later on in life. There have been some studies that show more early symptoms of CTE are the ones like erratic behavior, impulse control, and behavioral problems, as opposed to the more delayed later stages or really when more of the cognitive and memory impairment things set in. So bottom line, if this was representative of CTE, which again, we have zero way of actually proving or knowing, it would be a very atypical early presentation of symptoms based on the limited research we have. My second point was that we should be really careful with throwing around this suspected diagnosis on someone at a stage like Antonio Brown is in. It's a widely held belief with CTE that it's considered a progressive neurodegenerative condition, meaning it will continue to get worse and it will result in progressive degeneration of brain tissue. There also is of course no treatment or way to reverse what structurally is going on in the brain of someone who has CTE. So if we don't have a known diagnostic test and we have no known way of stopping the progression or treating CTE, then I don't think we should be just casually throwing out or making these claims that Antonio Brown has this condition. It's just not proper to label someone with a condition that's progressive and degenerative when we have no way of actually for sure diagnosing it or establishing that criteria. The other important piece of that is if there is any underlying mental illness problems going on in someone, we have ways to treat and reverse those problems. Other mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, aren't progressive neurodegenerative conditions. We have ways to stop them, we have ways to treat them and try to reverse those symptoms that work and that are successful. So on one hand, you have a condition that can't be diagnosed and can't be treated, and on the other hand, you have a whole list of potential other mental illness problems that aren't progressive, that aren't degenerative, and can be treated and can be turned around. And so that leads us into this final question of, does it really actually matter for his well-being what exactly is technically going on in the brain? Now I'd argue if we had a way of diagnosing someone with CTE, and we knew that stopping the head injuries would delay the progression or slow the progression, then yeah, it would be really important to know because we would recommend someone of course stop playing professional football and stop the head injuries. But if you look at the symptoms going on with someone, regardless of if it's CTE or just a general mood or mental illness disorder, things need to be addressed and treated. Certainly there's long-term health implications of having something like CTE, but regardless, in your day-to-day -day life, in the moment, what's being manifested are those problems with behavior, are those problems with memory, and those are things that we can work on trying to control and treat. Bottom line though, the only person who knows exactly what's going on with Antonio Brown's mental well-being is Antonio Brown and his personal physicians. Everything else is just pure speculation, and like I said, I think there's a lot of danger in throwing out these diagnoses of CTE in someone when we have no way of proving it, and it really could have potentially serious implications on the rest of their life. Certainly whenever we see an individual displaying behaviors like this, it raises concern for their well-being outside of the sport. Mental illness should never be presumed in an individual without truly knowing what's going on, and it's also something that shouldn't be ignored if it's truly been diagnosed and assessed. And at the end of the day, mental health and well-being can be just as important as physical health and well-being, and even in athletes who don't have signs of mental illness, it still is important to address and take notice of your own mental health. That's it for the video though, everybody. I hope you learned something. Make sure again and go subscribe with football season starting up, NBA right around the corner. Gonna be bringing you a lot more exciting content these upcoming seasons with everything sports injury and sports medicine related. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.